Good morning, everyone. I am Michelle Merkel, President of Junior Achievement of Mahoning Valley. Welcome to JA Personal Finance. Uh, today we have with us Kai Pegues from TCF Bank, who will be presenting to you today regarding consumer protection. I'm kind of excited about this topic, Kai, because uh, there's a lot of things happening out there that we need to be safe with our identities, and, and this is a great topic. So Kai, welcome and um, thank you. Thanks, Michelle. Great to be here. Welcome everyone. Um, yeah, we're gonna talk about consumer protection and especially in light of the pandemic, um, you're, we're seeing so much fraud out there. So this is a very important topic. Um, before we start, I'll just talk a little bit about me. My name is Kai Piggies and I'm the Community Development Market Manager for TCF Bank. Um, I have been in banking for over 35 years, started out as a teller um, with Society Bank, which is now Key Bank, um, then uh, was at Chase, um, and now uh, with a smaller community bank that has sent since merged with Huntington. So you'll start seeing those TCF signs in the Valley disappear. And uh, we will now be Huntington. That'll happen in the June timeframe. Um, so um, when I graduated Hiram College, I started out in banking as a teller, worked my way up to uh, where I sold financial products as a relationship banker. Uh, assistant manager, and I spent the most of my time as a branch manager. And with that, uh, working in an office setting, kind of controlling, you know, a whole staff, really loved it. But I did run uh, across quite a lot of fraud. And it's so important, um, as I mentioned these things, that you kind of really listen to them and guard your uh, financial identity because we'll, we will all develop a, a digital tattoo, so to speak. And um, this is an excellent um, module on how to kind of tips, things to avoid, pitfalls to avoid and, and tips to allow you to um, make those smart choices and defend yourself from financial harm. Um, we're going to be even watching a video. And as you watch that video, I'd, I'd, I'd ask you to kind of be mindful of those things that you're seeing the person do that they probably shouldn't do. Um, you know, what behaviors did you see in the, vi in the video that put um, the person's finan finances at risk? And what can you do to protect you, yourself and, and your finances? Um, so with this module, as I mentioned, financial fitness, we're going to um, just uh, learn about protecting your finances from threats that can put you at risk. So we'll just go um, straight into the video here. Thanks, Michelle. And as I mentioned, as you watch it, just think of a time when uh, someone you know, or maybe yourself has gotten in trouble over something that was shared online. Um, so um, just, um, carefully watch this and take heart. Looks like we might be having some sound issues. I'm not sure if you can hear, but I, I can't hear.
Okay, thanks, Michelle. Um, I'm not sure if everyone heard that, but I love the way they wrote everything out. So it, it, I, the one to 10 um, rules um, to help you avoid identity theft were just incredible. And I would encourage you to um, take heart to those, write those down. Um, we uh, talk, I talked earlier about the digital tattoo um, and how important it is that you're cautious about what you share online because what you share will remain visible to the world and will represent you um, for longer than what you can imagine. Um, uh, just make sure that as you're sharing these things that you avoid sharing anything that would um, have a financial consequence to you. Um, even on like Facebook, when you take those quizzes that perhaps ask about your birthday month or the color of your eyes or where you were born or something like that, those are actually designed to collect information on you to make it easier for someone else to steal your identity. Because oftentimes when you have to choose those security questions, you're, you, you would choose something that had that would be related to that little quiz that you took online. So I would just say, just avoid um, those things. Um, also, you know, sharing um, online those things that you wish you hadn't done with regards to, you know, how appropriate they are. Um, even something like that can um, have negative consequences in even being accepted into college or um, a job that you had applied to. Um, we are going to go to protecting your digital tattoo um, and how to, um, uh, just tips, don't put your phone number, your address, your social security number on social media. Um, your passwords, make sure that you're using a mix of numbers, symbols, capital and lowercase letters, use a different password for each account. Um, a tip for you would be to use something that's personal to you that someone else might not know. It, may, it would help you to remember that password to the point where you don't have to write it down. Maybe a, a, a line in a favorite song that you like, um, a quote from a favorite author, author that you saw in a book or something fun that happened on a vacation. Um, you can um, and make passwords out of something like that and they would be very hard to hack into. Um, and as I mentioned before, um, protecting your digital tattoo by not posting any negative and appropriate um, information that would reflect poorly on you. And uh, what happens uh, as the result of um, having, uh, you know, putting information out there or, or giving this information um, would be, the consequences would be identity theft. Um, identity theft is um, a crime that occurs when someone uses your name, uses your social security number or your credit card number or other personal information without your permission. So it doesn't have to be all of those, it could be one or the other. So it's just very important that you not surrender these numbers without being very careful at the site that you're inputting this information in, or if someone should give you a call. For example, if your bank calls and or they say that you're the bank, they're not going to ask you for your social security number because that bank already has that number. They might ask you to verify simple uh, questions as you set up when you perhaps you open your account, but never your social security number. Um, so we're going to um, uh, make it, give you some tips that'll just make it hard for anyone to commit identity theft for you. And hey, how do you find out if your identity has been confident? Uh, has been, um, excuse, excuse me, compromised. Um, what, what are the evidence of the theft? Um, how do you know? Well, you want your credit report. That's probably, that is a way that um, by, by um, periodically and not frequently, but I'd say at least once a quarter, check your credit report. 
which is a record of your personal financial transactions um, or your credit history. Check your credit report. Make sure there's no um, new entries there. Um, another um, way that you might have known that your identity has been compromised would maybe you're getting declined for a credit card, whereas before you, you've had no problem with that or you're starting to get a bill that you hadn't heard of, something like that. So what's in the credit report? It's a record of your personal financial transactions or your credit history. Um, you can use that report to protect your finances because it will often show evidence of any suspicious activity and know your rights. Um, there are rules in place to help consumers dispute information on the credit report and restore their credit score if they found out that something is inaccurate or fraudulent. Um, so you can um, access your credit report reports once a year through any of the three major credit reporting agencies, which are Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. You can also go into um, freecreditreport.gov. Um, and should you um, find um, evidence of fraud, um, there are certainly ways that you can um, uh, avoid it going further, ways that you can look to protect yourself. Because we're virtual, we can't, we're not really going to go into the different games um, that this module wants us to go to. Um, but there are some questions here that I think are um, uh, very good. I, I would love for you to remember the answers to these. So we'll just go to the next screen. Um, let's see. Yeah, next screen. This is just kind of an overview of a credit card I'm sorry, your credit report, um, what appears on it, how it shows you when the um, credit accounts were opened and what those limits are. Next screen. And I believe next screen, we've got some questions that are gonna pop up great. Okay, this is it. All right, so um, I'm not going to ask your answers here, but I did want to go over these questions because I looked over them earlier and I think they're very important. Next screen. All right, so how can a credit score be improved? So A, make a plan to pay bills on time. B, try to pay off debts as soon as possible. C, apply for a loan to pay off the debts. Or D, is it A and B? And if the answer is A and B. So always never incur a debt without a plan to get out of that debt. Make, it, make a plan to pay your bills on time and try to pay off your debts as soon as possible. Next screen. Um, what's the best way to protect your digital tattoo? A, delete your offensive posts. B, think carefully before you share online. C, post anything as long as it's honest. And D, use a fake name. B. Think carefully before sharing online. I've said that 14 times probably before, but it's so important to do that um, because once it's out there, it's out there. Next screen, question three. What is the best plan if you accidentally respond to an email requesting personal information? A, contact your bank and tell them to set an alert on your account. B, monitor your credit report for suspicious activity. C, nothing because the damage has been done. And D, A, and B. Um, yes, the damage has been done, but there are some things that you can do about it. So the answer is D, A, and B. It's very important that you contact your bank to set an alert on your account. And B, monitor your credit report for suspicious activity. And then finally, the last question, um, next page, is how should suspicious charges on a credit card be handled? Um, a, nothing, oh, I'm sorry. A, notify the credit card company. B, call the stores where the suspicious charges occurred. C, cut up the credit card. D, track down the person who made those charges. And your answer would be to notify the credit company um, because they're going to immediately put a lock on your account and um, then there are uh, ways to, trend, uh, to dispute those charges. All right, next screen.
we're just going to do a, a, a quick review and then we'll go into some question and, and questions and, and answers. Um, so the choices that you make online, leave a mark. Just remember that, yeah, you're going to have a digital tattoo. Um, and that tattoo can have a positive or a negative effect on how people are seen by others. Um, sharing your personal information online can be risky for your personal finances. Um, your credit report shows your financial history. So review it carefully, review it regularly for possible errors and threats to your digital reputation. If you find um, evidence of suspicious activity, you have the right to dispute it. Do dispute it, excuse me. And um, this includes the items that you didn't buy, the transactions that you don't re recognize, and purchases in places that you have um, never been. Um, someone asked in the, uh, uh, I had a question in the previous module about credit and debt um, about. Um, um, when, how to develop credit and how, how to get in to look at your credit report. Um, you cannot view, any items cannot affect your credit until you're 18. However, um, I realize I'm talking to students here and it's very important um, that once you turn 18, you do look at your credit report because in some instances, children's identities have been stolen to create um, a fraudulent uh, credit profile. Someone could possibly change um, your birth date um, and um, be um, have transactions appearing on your credit report and it's not you. So um, being a branch manager for so many years, I have seen where um, customers will come in at a very young age and uh, very confused and, um, hey, where do I start? This is not me, I need to dispute this. Um, and each credit reporting agency that I mentioned has a dispute um, process on file. And then there is also, um, what is identitytheft.gov is a great site to go to um, that'll give you step-by-step by step information on what to do and what to and how to avoid it. Once you start working, um, a, a great tip is to make sure that your um, income taxes are filed as soon as possible, that you file for that refund soon. Um, something that's happening very common today is um, once we go to file, we find out that the person has already filed and gotten a return. Um, so the quicker you file, um, you will lessen the chance that of um, identity theft. I am a, a volunteer tax preparer for the VITA program through un the United Way. And um, let's see, I, I've prepared for six weeks now and I've received someone in each of those six weeks that has had their identity theft stolen um, via a, uh, filing a fraudulent tax return. So that is very, very important. Um, let's see, so we went through uh, some things pretty fast. Um, we talked about um, ways to avoid identity theft and, and um, some tips on how to keep your digital tattoo from impacting you negatively. Um, I will open this up now for any questions um, that you might have. Um, this is a, uh, um, you're at a time in your life now where you can make those moves to be very protective of your, your digital identity. Um, and it starts there with um, protecting your social security number, which everyone has. Um, your name, your address, your, um, we talked earlier about the Facebook um, quizzes that are out there. Those are, just don't take those. They usually, if they don't, if they're not collecting your personal information, they're also um, very real chance of, of putting a virus on your personal computer or your phone. So you really, I would just say avoid those altogether. Um, 
we talked about if the bank calls you, what kind of questions they might, they should already know the answers to and when you uh, might um, uh, are hearing these, these questions, just, just hang up, don't even attempt to answer them. And then finally, those jobs that are out there that you might see online that seem too real to be true, where you're going to earn, um, boatloads of money for very sm a small amount of work and we're going to prepay you by sending you a thousand dollar check or something like that. Those are all fraudulent. Um, if you receive a check in the mail, you want to make sure that, hey, I, I knew this check was coming. I knew what the dollar amount was for and it's not fraudulent, fraudulent because that'll have a very negative effect on you as well. So I'll open it up for if there's any questions out there. Anything, Michelle? don't have any questions at this time, but I do think, Kai, this is a very important okay. topic. I cannot tell you between family members, um, friends, everybody's been affected by um, this digital, um, how should I say, whether they got an email or they get a phone call, and, and it seems like they're getting smarter and smarter and um, getting people to either click on a link or provide the information that they are requiring. Um, and, and so I think it is important, everything that you touched on, um, that if a bank or somebody calls you and asks for this information, they're not gonna call over the phone and ask for it. Um, they're not gonna send an email right. and ask for it. And we tell, I tell my children um, time and time again, who are teenagers, that if you do get an email, you know, and you don't know who it's from, or you think it might be from somebody that, for example, Amazon you purchased, do not click on the links. Um, you know, be careful. Um, if you don't recognize the phone number, don't answer it. You know, let it go to voicemail. Um, and, and then do some research on your own end because you have an Amazon account. So go to your account and see if there's any messages in the account telling you on your pending orders versus then answering an email sent from Amazon. Um, that's where they like to communicate. Or if somebody from the bank calls and leaves a message, you know, call the bank back um, with the numbers that you do have on your credit card um, to check those purposes. Um, I've seen, uh, you know, a friend of mine where she did get an email from Amazon and clicked on the link, um, which then resulted in a phone call and somebody having access to her computer. And then to the point where they said that um, they logged onto her computer, so they had full access to it, um, and said that she owed, they overpaid her by $1,000 and that they needed Walmart gift cards. <laughs> And she went to Walmart and purchased oh. it. And it wasn't until the woman that was checking her out said, did you get a phone call? <laughs> Do not buy these gift cards. It's a scam. So we see this time and time again um, that people get caught up and they get very smart. Um, and the best thing that you can do is to follow up and make sure the information that you're providing is going to the right person. I don't know. So those are kind of my things yeah. um, that I can speak about. I just think we live in a tech savvy world and we're so yeah. quick to respond back and provide information that we need to stop and think, should I be providing this information? Exactly. Um, even when you receive those links <clears throat> or you're looking to click on a, um, a link, you know, look for that um, padlock that appears right before that HTTPS, um, just letting you know it's secured. Um, oftentimes these um, fraudsters um, will put an extra letter or change, you know, uh, like instead of uh, JC Penny, they might add the, uh, an, an extra E or something like that, and you don't notice it. 
um, and then boom, that takes you down that rabbit hole that could lead to fraud. So paying extra attention to those things, um, kind of pause before you click. And is this something that I, I really need to do? Um, why is this person asking this of me? Is this too good to be true? Yeah. Yeah, it is. And that's and about, and, and also a great resource. Yeah. And a great resource that I neglected to mention is your banker. Um, you can, um, every major bank, every bank in the Mahoning Valley is gonna have, has some experienced people there behind those desks and they can usually, there's um, identity theft guidelines or a process or a procedure in, pay, in place if something like that's happened to you or even to prevent it. So I'd recommend to visit your banker as well. Yeah. And, and thank you. I appreciate it. And, um, you know, great, again, great information. Um, I think we just need to, there's, I know with my own work, our national office keeps doing phishing tests or practice emails that they send out to the employees to see, to teach and learn mm -hmm. everyone that, you yeah. know, you might get an Amazon email, you might get a Dunkin' Donuts, um, you might get something. Um, but again, if you don't look at the signature lines, if you don't see if it's locked, um, you can fall prey and then they can access your computers, your information and go forward. So wonderful information that you shared with us. Um, and I appreciate your time today. As I mentioned, our, these videos will be recorded and downloaded later um, for our educators to access and use in their classroom. So I do appreciate it. And any additional questions that you might have, um, please contact the Junior Achievement Office and we will be happy to get those responses to you as well. All right, thanks, Kai. Well, thanks, Michelle. I enjoyed being here. Everyone have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. You too.